open your heart and soul through our centering prayer. The Lord's Prayer comes to you as a gift from Jesus. The prayer was taught to his disciples by the blessed Savior. The prayer is more than just words on a page, they are holy utterances from the lips of the Messiah. The words flowed from the inside of Jesus to the ears of his inner circle. Each syllable originated in the mind of Jesus. Every word passed over his lips, carried by his holy breath. How glorious these words are as they resound in your hearing today. Each word still has the intent of the love with which Jesus spoke. Gather your children in, O Spirit of Holiness, and ignite these living words in the souls of those who hear them today. Allow each person to listen to the voice of Jesus in every word. Speak to them spirit to spirit so the words will flow past their ears and rest gently upon their souls. As they hear the words of Jesus, give them the insight to understand their meaning, and the courage to live their essence. Indeed there is no speech more glorious, words more holy, than the prayer Jesus taught all children to pray. You are now ready to encounter Jesus in the depth of the prayer he taught you to pray. Hear now the Lord's Prayer anew for the first time. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now take a moment to relax. If you are seated, feel your feet resting comfortably on the floor. Gently ease into the chair in which you are seated. Let the chair take on the role of supporting your body. Let your hands face palms up to show that you are ready to receive what the Holy Spirit brings you at this moment. Let the chair support your body as the Holy Spirit connects with your soul. If you recline, let the weight of your body disperse across the area in which you recline. Palms resting gently in the up position showing your openness to receive the gift from the Holy Spirit. Now, focus your attention on your breath. Breathe in through your nose as a sign of your willingness to receive blessings from the Holy Spirit through this guided meditation. As you inhale to receive, slowly count to four. One, two, three, and four. Now hold your breath, showing that you have the holy breath of life in you for the count of four. Hold one, two, three, and four. Now gently exhale through your mouth with your tongue resting on the roof of your mouth for the count of four. Exhale one, two, three, and four. Follow me as you inhale through the nose, one, two, three, and four, hold, hold for one, two, three, and four, exhale through the mouth one, two, three, and four, one more time on your own. You are now ready to receive what the Holy Spirit will bring to you in these moments. Our Father who art in heaven, God is easier to find than you thought. Heaven is not a celestial space that lies light years beyond where you live. Heaven is all around you because God encompasses you. Indeed, the essence of God is within you, the divine power of the Holy Spirit is never more than a heartbeat away. Rather than exploring outer space for God, try to connect with God through your inner space. Imagine that the power of God the Father is within you and not presiding on some distant star. 
Close your eyes for a moment and let the world slip away. Allow your hearing to turn inward, forgetting the sounds around you. Place your hand on your heart and feel the sound of God's voice in every measured beat. Listen in between the beats to that still small voice of God. It is the same voice Jesus heard as he spoke to his Father in prayer. Quiet your mind and listen with your soul. What does that still small voice say to you? Take your time, God does speak if we listen. What do you want to say to God? Give a prayer of thanks for this encounter. Hallowed be thy name. What is a name? A rose by any other name still a rose, correct? Shakespeare got it partially right. Human things are named with human words. God was very intentional in sharing divine names with the children. Yahweh was the first name given to Moses. Yahweh means, I am who I am. The name carries the omniscient power of God that does not rely on outside sources. God is source and power unto God's own being. God does not need outside influences, God is enough. Yet, this self-contained, all-powerful God of the ages has such great love for you and all creation that God sent a blessing to all people. The gift was born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and given the name of Jesus. The God of Moses became your God. The name Jesus gives us an example of what God does. Jesus means to deliver or save. God sent Jesus to deliver or save people from sin. Center your attention on the name of Jesus. It is a name that is given to all who will receive it. It is God's earthly holy name. It is as worldly as a baby's cry. The name Jesus carries the same earthy properties as the dust from which your spiritual ancestors were formed. You are washed with the name of Jesus at your baptism and renamed in him. Jesus is the holiest earthly name God could give you. Slow your breath again and letter by letter repeat the name of Jesus. J. E. E. S. U. S. Jesus is the hallowed name given to you. Repeat the name Jesus over again slowly let Jesus become your mantra for the next few moments. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Heaven became a living reality closer to you than hands or feet, and more a part of you than life itself. Jesus prayed heaven on earth. This was no small matter, but Jesus made the way by being born on this earth and raised by human parents. From his earthly position, Jesus prayed to his heavenly Father to bring heaven to him and thus to us. What does this mean? It means that Jesus wanted God to do for us what God did for Jesus. Jesus was now a citizen of Israel and a member of the human race. Jesus' prayer was to bring the power of the living God to be a constant source of energy, support, and love, to the people of the planet God created. How bold this prayer must have seemed to the casual listener. Jesus dared to call the holy God whose name was never uttered, by the familiar of Father. How out of bounds Jesus must have been in the eyes of the religious leaders, to see the renegade rabbi praying directly to God, and evoking God's holy presence in the here and now. God did not work that way, or did he? Jesus clarified that whatever happened must occur according to God's will. But, was not Jesus the living Son of God already an affirmation of what God so willed? 
Are you bold in your prayers? Jesus showed you how to pray so that the line between heaven and earth would blur directly in front of you. Did not Jesus say, when you pray, say? Not only did Jesus permit you to be bold in your prayer, but he also gave you the words for this holy formula. Over the next several minutes, be brash, bold, and brilliant in your prayers. You have permission, you have a purpose, now claim the power Jesus gave you. Pray until heaven and earth unite before you. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. There is an intentional flow to all divine energy. Divine energy does not die or cease being, God's source is an infinite flow of holy outpouring. One moment you can see the love of God in the twinkling and sparkling eyes of a newborn baby, and the next moment, Divine energy rests in the hollow heart of a grieving soul who lost his loved one. To the casual observer, this energy seems inconsistent, but the divine energy of love seeks the shortest way to a brightly born babe, or a sad, sick soul, filled with grief. The energy of which I speak is called divine love. God used this love to create all things and continues this holy love to cherish everything. On the outside, God's love appears to be changing but it is the eternal lasting love of God that flows directly to the source. Pray for your daily bread. Even material things are love tokens from the divine but do not cling to them too closely. What you receive rests with you, but for a fleeting moment in time, then it must flow to fill yet another need. The bread that holds your sandwich together is made of the same ingredients as the loaf called the body of Christ in the communion meal. When you receive forgiveness, Take it as a temporary gift to forgive your sins. The blessing of forgiveness may be for the moment, but the love lingers forever. It is by the same love that the sun shines, and the rains fall, so the plants will grow to make your daily bread. It was the same loving energy that took the bread and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let the divine love of God flow to you as you seek forgiveness of sin, but do not cling to God's holy loving response. Pass God's forgiveness of your sins into the heart and soul of anyone who harmed you. Do they not deserve the same daily bread as you? Spend the next few moments searching your heart and soul to find those who have wronged you. Feed them the daily bread of divine loving energy. It is not yours to keep it is meant to be shared. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. When you face evil, you are probably not looking toward God. Evil can only exist in the neglect of the Holy One. God is still approachable and accessible in your evil thoughts, deeds, or lifestyle. But more attention is paid to the lingering sin than the presence of the source of love. Unfortunately, this is a common condition of the human psyche. Want, need, and desire are formidable forces to battle, 
it can overwhelm you and force you to live a life of a self-inflicted absence from God. While the psyche is fed, the soul suffers. Too many see the absence of God in the shameless acts of destruction, hate, and violence today. It is unsurprising because God cannot be found in such shameful, sinful, selfish acts. You must look elsewhere to find the Holy Presence. The same tears cried by the Savior are shed over the lost lives of the fallen victims. Painful grief is felt in the holes rendered by the Roman soldier who nailed Jesus to the cross. God is never in the act of violence, but the Spirit of God sweeps over the chaos, as in the beginning. With a holy breath, the Spirit tries to reorder life, comfort the broken hearts, and care for the crushed souls. I encourage you to place your hands palm up on your lap. Let your eyes close and imagine that Jesus is holding your hands. In the next several minutes, I ask you to pray for the people who have been destroyed by violence, murdered by war, and crushed by senseless acts of hatred. Feel the holy presence of the divine healer holding fast to your hands, he will not let go. As you lift a group or name, end your prayer with the phrase, Lord, hear my prayer. Lord, hear my prayer. Lord, hear my prayer. Lord, hear my prayer. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. You now complete the prayer the Lord gave you. Kingdom. Power. Glory. These three words define the presence of God in the kingdom. The spiritual force that exists in you and your world today. Finally, the beauty we see when we look upon the glory of God. We live in the holy presence of God. You are in God's presence at this very moment. You are permanently bonded in the presence of God, as you live and move and have your being in God's reign on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is not a place, but it is the holy presence of God. The kingdom of God is not a land of shadows where you can only get a glimpse of God as the divine presence passes you by. God is in you with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. God is visible and incarnate with the holy earthly life of Jesus. God is alive and well and is with you, around you, above you, and in you at this moment. Yes, God still speaks if we learn to listen. If you believe God is alive and present in your life today, what do you want to ask God? You are in God's holy presence and stand in the brilliance of his glory. Is there a better time to speak to God? Is there a more appropriate setting to commune with the Holy One? If not now, when? If not here, where? God knows your mind before you think. God is aware of your needs before you realize them. Perhaps your prayers are for your benefit as much as God's hearing. Remain in the silence of this moment and connect with God's spirit to spirit. Jesus led you to just a time and place as this. Breathe in the beauty which is God. Become aware of your breath again and follow it to the count of four. Inhale, one, two, three, and four. Hold, one, two, three, and four. Exhale, one, breathing, two, three, and four. Relax and become aware of your settings. Ease your spirit into this earthly plane and follow me as I guide you in a closing prayer. 
God is with you at this moment. Reach out and feel God's holy presence. You explored a prayer that reaches from the past to your viewing or listening today. You received more than just ancient words unearthed from the distant past. You received the living words from Jesus. Jesus spoke each word and uttered every syllable directly to his Father in heaven. The prayer was a direct conversation between the Divine Father and the Holy Son. Today Jesus let us listen as he spoke the prayer again. We were blessed by his presence, encouraged by his words, and inspired by his faith. We receive the Lord's Prayer as a lasting offering from Jesus to us. Truly he paved the way directly to God the Father. Let these words connect to our souls as a living reminder that God is accessible. God is with us. And most of all, God loves us. To God be the kingdom, power, and glory, forever and ever. In the name of he who prayed this prayer, Amen. Thank you for joining me in this guided meditation. I am very appreciative to everyone who likes, shares, and subscribes to these videos. So, thank you. You can find more information on devotional offerings at Spirit Calling Michael Wheeler.com. Remember, nothing is closer to you than the Spirit of God.